little parts of Ohio have been able to keep a street racing scene going. Cleveland Street's been dead for quite some time. Whenever a discussion of a street race would come up, someone would always ask for a start from 40 or 60 miles an hour. Dig racing, or racing from a dead stop, was almost unheard of. So, this is a story of a group that came together with very different vehicles on a mission to revive Cleveland Street Racing. And what we learned was, there's a lot more to it than taking a dialed in race car, or a well sorted roll racer, and putting it on the street.
good. It was good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got, got some room to improve, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, the trans was getting a little warm there. Probably because I like did like 16 burnouts. Hi. was like, hey, uh, fuck you, asshole. <laughs> Trey's like, hey, uh, you don't have to be the dumbest person on earth, you know. I'm actually curious to see how much these grow. So as excited as we were to be out in the streets, we learned one very important thing. Know the schedules of the streets we burn. And it's hard to not get jazzed up in situations like this and want to do a little beating on your daily driver. One burnout or two? And Chris never misses an opportunity to beat on his daily driver. Sometimes you just have to wash the L off. One of my friends recently told me that when he watches my videos, he can't believe that there's still street racing going on in 2023. And one thing that I enjoy is anything that is built around American car culture, including the drive-in movie theater. And it just so happens that the latest Fast and Furious movie came out along the time that we were filming all this footage. In an era where cars are becoming more and more like appliances, I take every opportunity to expose my kids to some of the great history that American car culture has to offer. Not to mention a wonderful snack bar. <laughs> say that I feel like every time I line up here I feel like I'm lining up crooked oh that time I don't know how we had you lined up so shitty like I feel like I should be this way and I'm pointed this way the curb real bad i don't know if like it's just the way that the road looks in here versus how it looks out there i don't well, know plus the burn burnout marks we have are very very shitty yeah they they're are they're like very heavy towards the curb they are Feels a lot better. We're in like a curve. I get it. 
You want to take it back a little bit more? So yeah, back, let's like back up to the puddle. Back. So 60 foot is a 180, eighth mile 71. I mean, that first one was good. You peeled, like, you peeled the rubber off the road. Yeah, this one you're just a little too off. much out of the groove. So how do I uh, save this or whatever I need to do? Yeah. Well, th but this is why all the boomers were able to claim all the things they did because they didn't have shit for yeah. data. They just they had a bunch of buddies good. standing out here drinking beer, going, "Fuck yeah, man!" You got, you got a point there. <laughs> Very good point there. Like, man, that looks fast as fuck. Right. Like 660, 748. That's 748 to 8. Is that the, what was the 60 foot? was only a 680 though? That doesn't sound right, does it? Uh, 60 foot was a 178, which that, that might be kind of right. You had a lot of wheel speed. So it immediately grabbed the rubber off the ground, yeah. and then it started to really start cooking the tire. So it lifted the front like it's supposed to, but I almost feel like you need to pull a little bit more power out of it for yeah. a second, just to give it enough time to get the tire kind of settled. Well, well. Yeah, she's getting a little hot. I gotta probably call that a night. Yeah, yeah. something not feel right on that one, or? It just went left. Went okay. Like, I was like in the center of the road. I was like, ah. Yeah. That one looked pretty good on the hit. How do I go to the last one? Look at that. That is what the tire needs to look like. It yeah. also looked like the body didn't fucking droop immediately either. Yeah. That one looked like it was checking out. I like on the first hit, 
that initial pause that it did. That's what you want it to look like. Because it's starting to roll. Yeah, I kind of like that too. That one was good. It felt like the best one. Yeah. And it's the most mile an hour for sure. Uh... That one it actually paused the Same thing though, it's topping out the shock yeah. like immediately. Yeah. No, yeah, like instantly. Oh, yeah. And I even tightened it actually more than I was going to. The rebound. One of the great things about the street racing and no prep world are the people you meet and the connections you make. And DRD Visuals has been killing it with t-shirt designs this year. So when they put out looking for people to partner with for this new Halloween streets t-shirt, I had to jump on board. And it was perfect for the twins. For more shirts that they're not allowed to wear to school. Now that we felt we were getting a pretty decent handle on street testing, we realized that if we wanted to do any racing, we needed to start testing in the left lane. I really felt like this was where the van's advantage was going to be, and I was excited to test out my theory. surgeon was excited to test out some new flagging techniques he'd seen on YouTube.
Now, one thing I always mentioned as we discuss coming out as a group is that the van is very, very loud, and it's going to attract attention. that I'm always concerned with and wanting to test is just being able to line up on a road and make a hit without a whole bunch of prep and a whole bunch of people helping you out and lining you up. So I was determined on my next hit to do it as quickly as possible before anybody was even around. It doesn't get much straighter than that.
<laughs> we good then? Maybe yeah. That did not work at all, even a little bit. Oh, of course, the fucking. What'd she do, dog? Nothing good that I want to talk about. 
<laughs> so, since the road is so shitty. Yeah, I think I'm gonna drop tire pressure. What are you at? I'm at 15. I tried to go up a lot and just play with it. So, we're coming up with a decent idea of mm -hmm. uh, do a shorter burnout. Okay. So what I'm gonna have you do though is I need you to really slam on the fucking brakes though, yeah. because I want you to get wheel speed and shift to third. Yeah. I think just how we have the uh, primary coming out of it too and the boost, it's making the burnout even harder. Oh, is it doing it during the burnout too? Oh, it's kind of got to do it everywhere. Oh. So I don't know what's helpful. What's it doing? It's making it even harder. Basically, I, I get like a little hit and then it's like. Oh. Yeah. It's an intentional. But it sucks for this. Pretty good night of testing and we felt like we learned enough to line up races with another team. But the next morning when I started the van it sounded like all the rods were coming out of it. So I quickly went down to Summit Racing to pick up the wrong starter and head back home. Fortunately I was able to figure out the problem on the old starter and I didn't need to replace it after all. You're not supposed to thread lock these little set screws but guess what? Guessing that's probably not supposed to move like that. Big blocks with big tube headers are awesome until you have to replace a starter. So I got it all put back together and set out to make some test hits on nitrous since I hadn't done it yet before we had a race in three days. Unfortunately in my haste I tightened the starter wire against the header so when I got down to the end of the street to try to make a test hit everything started smoking and went black. I had to walk home, get Jeanette to tow me back home in Wine and Roses backwards, which she had never done before and figured we could just go the speed limit. It wasn't a great night all in all. Now 
There we go. That's what we're seeing. Dumbass. Now, I don't fall for those fake hot girl profiles on Facebook asking to be my friend, but for some reason I always fall for anybody that says they're starting a group looking for fast racers. It was pretty clear early on that we were kind of in a different league than these guys in this chat group, but we were eager to get some races in, and as we learned, anything can happen. The group decided we should probably take these guys under our wing and show them what we know. A lot of these guys had never raced before from a dead stop, and we had some knowledge to share with them. It honestly had never occurred to me that some people didn't know how to do a burnout. So with months of testing, and easily more than double the horsepower, we figured this was going to be an easy win. It was the jump heard round the world, and we were kind of stunned. Now, I had called out Eric first round, and they were very quick to tell everybody that Eric was the fastest dig guy in their group. And based on all the videos, they're right. He pretty much cleans house with anybody that comes around now. I'm with him, we got 20. Does Wayne need us? I forgot to arm my nitrous, and I was really hoping he wasn't going to come around me. Where's my 20? Where's my 20? Where are you at? Oh, yeah. It was bound to happen. I, I, I knew it. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good doing business with you. El Capudio used to cost that. Your ears bleeding. What? Now, Jonathan drew Cheyenne in a turbo fusion, which again we knew was pretty much going to be a bloodbath. But as we learned first round, there could be some driver error or there could be mechanical issues. It's anybody's race. So Jonathan's trans brake starts acting up. And I wasn't even going to take the buy run until I realized that I was going to need to race Jonathan and I still hadn't tested the nitrous. So while I was heating up my bottle, John and BJ decided to do a grudge race with the turbo all-wheel drive ST against the nitrous F-150.
helicopter because I'm going to use the nitrous this time and I'm not sure what it's going to do. So, in addition to learning that I cannot leave on the trans brake on the street, I was also having voltage problems and it just kept dropping. I just hoped this thing had one more race left in it. But it, it, my every time your shift does a burnout, it yeah. kind of kicks out. Well, it does that when it's like kind of dry, but I didn't want to put a whole bunch of prep down because you just don't need it. Doesn't it. Do, it doesn't do anything. You know, right. So no, I, I get want, it. I didn't want to fuck myself up, but that's what it does that. And then, but sometimes you're not going to be lined up right. You know, I mean. Right. Time for the finals, baby. No, let's wait until after we're done racing. Okay. I'll make a quick one with you.
I was not upset about losing in the least bit. I was only half a car behind the fastest car in our group. That's a pretty big win for the van. I needed to. I, I bet you did. <laughs> congrats. Congrats on the W. Nice job. Sounds like that was a race. I want to see the finish line. So. Uh, you have the GoPro, and I know for a fact that they're going to fucking stay. Okay. I need some. That was fucking awesome. That was awesome. That was awesome. That was awesome. Wayne, he grabbed Scramble on you. <laughs> Now the fuel injected turbo LS guys like to pick on the carburetor guys for being dinosaurs and obsolete, but I think their time is coming too. Yeah, I made a solid pass. It's one of the better passes I've made. 